Hey everyone, I'm Mel. I'm a designer working in the video game industry and welcome to the Game Design Perspective. Before anything, quick disclaimer, everything I'm going to be talking about in this video is my opinion and my opinion alone. It doesn't represent any other person, entity or studio, past, person or future that I work on. With that said, let's begin. So we all know the story behind Kingdom Hearts that Squaresoft wanted to make a game that could rival Super Mario 64 and that's why they ended up with going with Disney and created Sora and blah 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 blah. And the fact that they wanted to rival Super Mario 64 tells me that Kingdom Hearts actually started somewhat as a platformer game that later turned into this mix of a platformer and an action RPG and it's perfectly represented by having Disney and having Final Fantasy as both counterparts of what the mix was a platformer and an action RPG if you take a look at Kingdom Hearts 1 what they did in that game is that pretty much you start the game you start the Destiny Islands and what happens there well first you select your RPG build like if you want to go for attack you want to go for magic you want for to go for defense after that they show you how, pretty much the basics of combat and they show you how to platform your way through the level you even have a race against Riku that is pretty much a platforming race so Kingdom Hearts 1 establishes Kingdom Hearts as a platformer action RPG then Kingdom Hearts 2 gets into the mix and Kingdom Hearts it I, I'm not saying it did anything wrong right because Chain of Memories in all back on the Game Boy Advance was also somewhat of a an action RPG platformer but Kingdom Hearts 2 gets in the mix and it, sta it starts getting rid of the platforming elements and I'm not gonna say anything bad about Kingdom Hearts 2 because it's as close to perfect as it can be it doesn't mean that it was wrong by ditching some of the platforming from Kingdom Hearts 1 but it started taking Kingdom Hearts into a new direction but then Dream Drop Distance and Kingdom Hearts 3 were released what those games did it started with Dream Drop Distance and it was a system carried by Kingdom Hearts 3 is that they implemented a lot of what could make a fantastic platformer game but they never actually used it and that's even more true for Kingdom Hearts 3 than it is for Dream Drop Distance. So how about we dive into Kingdom Hearts 3 and start seeing what I'm talking about. Why don't we start by dissecting the player package. We know that Sora can run and I do think they can make this a little bit more responsive on future entries and I know there are some mods that address that but I don't think it's bad by any means is actually pretty good and Sora's animations are fantastic. Maybe it's a topic for another day. He has a jump and the jump is actually very high. This could very well feel at home for a platformer game. We have the roll and we have the air dash. That's what Sora begins with. After you progress through the game, you unlock your second jump. We just take a look at how high it gets. We're reaching the roof just by, by using the double jump. So again, it feels at home with a platformer game. And that's just the basics of what Kingdom Hearts 3 allows you to do. Once you get into the flow motion system, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about, you'll see that it is a platformer game. All right, so let's take a look at this. To activate the platform, the, the flow motion system, while well, you first jump, surprise, the main mechanic of usually platformer games, except for games like a snake pass, but you jump, and then you air dash to a wall. And look at that. Look at how fast Sora starts moving and and wall jumping, right? Look at that. It please tell me that doesn't start feeling and looking like a very unique platforming mechanic. Well, not only can you horizontally wall jump, you can also vertically do so which will just take a look at the height you get. And there are a lot of things that Flow Motion can do. And that is an entire platformer system that the game has. The issue here is that levels, especially Kingdom Hearts 3 more than Dream Drop Distance, were not built to use the Flow Motion system. Why? And why am I so confident about what I'm saying? Because the game allows you to pretty much get rid of the entirety of the system. Like if you take a look at that, it just says flow motion maneuver and you can just deactivate all of that. So you're getting rid of an entire system that was made for platforming and that is pretty much implemented and engraved into Sora's DNA. And if you remove it, levels start actually making a lot more sense. Why? Because levels were streamlined to use the wall run. Sometimes a little bit too much, right? But you can just traverse all of this without jumping because you have the wall run pump. But please tell me that this doesn't look more interesting and doesn't feel more interesting. Look at this section. It was built 
so that you jump maybe you use your flow motion and you get up there but it was built to pretty much use your platforming skills but what they did is that they streamlined pretty much everything here so i'm not using my hands i'm not touching anything but the stick and i can get up there what i'm seeing here is that it was probably not an issue that level designers did not know that you can use the flow motion because as level designers you usually have the player pack and, and you see what you can do with it i do think it is any it's something that the directing team of the game took and by the directing team i'm not necessarily saying it was nomura or tai yasue or or that it could have been a lead or even a, a producer or executive producer and i do think that was what happened because the game was extremely marketed towards new gamers they wanted to pull a lot of new fans into the game why because they spent a lot of money a lot of time uh building this game designing it and all of that stuff right for it to just tackle the hardcore kingdom hearts gamers i do think that was what happened and flow motion if you think about it and you play with it is actually not very easy to use right why because it is a very fast mechanic once you get into the flow motion which i absolutely adore the name and i do think it fits very well because you start getting into the state of flow right once you get into the flow motion sora won't stop until he has traveled a certain amount of distance or time right and you can you don't really move sora as usual you steer sora more like a car than a human character so it's not easy and if they leaned a little bit too much on the flow motion well they would have alienated a lot of players because it's not something that you can easily balance through difficulty like by choosing like the beginner difficulty or the pro difficulty it's not something you can easily balance right so there was a lot of this built because you can definitely see the platforming dna and the level they wanted to target it like that and it's not easy to get into the flow motion and use it i'm not blaming anyone on the team and to be honest the level is still one of my favorite levels ever made especially toy box like toy box is truly one of my favorite levels ever made like every single time I get in here, I can just explore and explore and explore and use Sora's player package and have a lot of fun. This section, like, it's pretty obvious, it's pretty simple, but you can definitely see that they wanted you to jump here, jump into the next box, and just get into the, the other side. But what happens here? They streamlined everything into the wall run because every time you see this shine go up a wall, it means that you can wall run because you can't do it everywhere. As you can see, we cannot do it here. So that's why I do believe uh, designers were able to actually place which walls they wanted you to wall jump up and which walls they didn't want you to. So you can just do this and I'm up there. I'm not using my hand and I'm up there. Now, I don't think the wall run was necessarily made to streamline the platforming in the game, but I do think it was a tool that they already had and was pretty much designed and prototype for San Francisco, which we're gonna go after this. And once they started marketing and seeing that platforming was a little bit on the hard side, maybe, especially if you use the flow motions, it was a little bit on the hard side for beginners and they wanted to pull so many new players. And they did, and they did. I, I had a lot of friends that their first Kingdom Hearts was this one. So what they did, once they started marketing the game, it was to streamline the entirety of the platforming throughout the level. The wall run looks cool, works great. I'm not throwing any shade at it. I don't think it is it is bad by any means, but you can definitely see where the remains of the platforming DNA of Kingdom Hearts was. Also, I chose this level not only because it's my favorite level and one of my favorite levels ever, period, <laughs> but also because it was built around this idea of height. Where we were was built around this idea of height. And if you take a look at the stores right here at the game store, you see that all the shelves work perfectly for a platformer level, right? Even if you can't reach them with, with just one jump, if you use the flow motion, you can get there. Or if you use your double jump. The only few parts that you use the flow motion is when you get two rails. And if you take a look at, at how the level is structured and laid out, you see that rails pretty much connect every single floor 
and it is very very interesting and rails are actually fantastic in this in this game please tell me that this mechanic wouldn't have worked amazingly for switches that required a lot of strength to to press so you jump and you needed to climb the entirety of the level and you have a, a switch there and you have to use the, the height of the level just to just to be able to have enough strength and press the switch but they got rid of pretty much uh everything that involved platforming and everything that was platforming was pretty much streamlined into using this uh this automatic movement right such as this which i'm not sure throwing any shade again it's i don't think the issue is that they had the wall run and yes if you use the wall run the way they did of course uh both mechanics the flow motion and the wall run well yeah they overlap with each other but if they if they balance the level a, a little bit differently if the designers were to balance it it would make for a very interesting pacing right just take a look at this right take a look at the, at the flow motion in action for the rails it's pretty sweet how you travel through the level right it was built as a platforming level and you can definitely see like a more classical platforming right but I do think San Francisco was a little bit of the star in here and they made those systems for that because San Francisco is the one that uses the shot lock and uses the wall run. So why don't we go to San Francisco and take a look at that? Say let's say bye to Woody and Boss because they are the best characters in an animated film ever made. All right, so we're at San Francisco and you'll see that here uh, the wall run mechanic makes a lot of sense. Why? Because buildings are extremely tall here. So platforming your way up every building and if you fall, it, well, it's extremely tedious and platforming could get a, start getting a little bit tedious. Uh, especially in uh, such an open environment, right? So the wall run mechanic makes a lot of sense right here. So the shot lock is not used very much. The only other time that I can think of right now is uh, with Hercules at the Olymp at, at Olympus and Thebes, right? So uh, yeah, this is one of the few levels that actually use it, right? Where you aim sort of in a very Spider-Man way uh, you aim to those red lights and you can you can reach them like a hook shot or spider-man web sipping all right and it makes a lot of sense in this environment i do think it was sort of the star of the show for square enix because it definitely feels uh, different in its platforming mechanics but using the shot lock doesn't really use the flow motion right like i can reach all of this but i'm never getting into the flow motion state really right like you see the particles and the vfx that soda is getting into the flow motion but really you're just getting to some other point right you're not dealing with the platforming as we showed it before but as you can see, even the flow motion doesn't really work here, all right? You have these poles that you can get, but at times either the metrics don't match and you don't get to the next pole, or they're pretty much leading you anywhere. I'm just going there and there are faster ways to, to reach other spots in this city, right? And then you have that some poles don't lead into the next one because the metrics don't, just don't match. Let, let's take a look at this. Let, let's align each other with the next pole. And you see, you don't reach there because it's not the city. It's not really designed for the flow motion. There is no level that is truly made for the flow motion. You never reach where you want to go. So that's why you can turn the flow motion off. You can pretty much do so. An entire platforming system, like you can just get rid of. That's that's what that's what I don't understand from Kingdom Hearts 3. Now I'm not saying the level design is bad again. It's actually really cool, and I do think it has the best level design in the Kingdom Hearts franchise ever. It is fantastic. But those are my two cents. I do think it was a decision made by direction and the marketing, which I don't blame them, right? But if you play the game without the flow motion, and by the way, these ones, these are probably my favorite rails ever made. They are fantastic. And whoever knows me knows that I love rails in games. And especially as a designer, I love I love using rails. Uh, but yeah, like 
flow motion is is definitely not used and i do think it was part of part of the marketing plan to target it to, for beginners and flow motion is definitely not a beginner system it's not easy to deal with all right so let's head out and talk a little bit more Right. So I definitely think that Kingdom Hearts should rely more on its platforming DNA. It's there. It has always been there. Kingdom Hearts 1 relied on it and Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance started getting it again into the Kingdom Hearts franchise, right? Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance levels allow a little bit more of the flow motion to be used, but then it was sort of nerfed on Kingdom Hearts 3. And by nerf, I don't necessarily mean that they nerfed the systems, but they also nerfed the levels. I really want to see more of it. I don't think the levels in Kingdom Hearts were badly made or badly designed. I I do think they are one of the best levels ever made. They had a lot of attention to detail, a lot of care, and they were perfectly. It's just that they're missing an entire system that is made for platforming. And even basic platforming, they're just streamlining it to a point where you don't even need to platform. You just need to walk to the walls. Again, I love this game and I enjoy it so much. I have it three times. I bought it at first on the deluxe edition when it first released. And after that, I bought the Xbox version. And then my family and my girlfriend gifted me the deluxe edition again sealed but why was that well because i just really wanted to have the party as their toy box versions why because kingdom hearts is one of my favorite games ever kingdom hearts 3 is one of my favorite games ever and toy story is my favorite movie ever so I, it was a match made in heaven for me <laughs> but i really wanted that so i literally have the game three times i adore this game I don't think it was badly made, but I want to see more of what made Kingdom Hearts 1 so special back into the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Square Enix needs to understand that Kingdom Hearts is not only an action RPG, because we already have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth feels so different because Kingdom Hearts also has the platforming mechanics. The levels are built so differently to the ones in Final Fantasy. A lot of systems and mechanics in Kingdom Hearts were made as platformer mechanics, such as when you use your special attack with Woody and Boss and you get the rocket. Please tell me that's not a platformer mechanic. Kingdom Hearts is a platformer at heart too, and I want to see that back for Kingdom Hearts 4. We know that the flow motion is coming back because we just have a small pre-rendered teaser and flow motion was part of the star in it. Let the platforming shine in Kingdom Hearts. With that said, I'm out. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Please let me know whatever you think about the Kingdom Hearts franchise, and let's all be fans together. Thank you so much for watching.